into a little bit about facelift, and I want you to share with the viewers about the minimally invasive facelift. Okay, well, one of the things that um, I really have been focusing on lately is uh, what's called a minimally invasive facelift or a short scar facelift, mm -hmm. and there are a variety of different types of techniques, uh, so th it's not like this is uh, a big novel uh, concept, but um, uh, I tend to like those for people that are on the younger end of the age spectrum or that don't need or want a whole knockdown, drag out major facial lifting procedure. You know, maybe their neck is not quite so bad, but it's, it's just along their jawline or jowl or mm -hmm. mid cheek area that they want to uh, spruce up. And uh, this also goes very nicely hand in hand with the fat transfer procedures that we were talking about before because one of the things I think that uh, facelifting in the past has neglected is volume changes. Uh, as a part of facial aging. Mm -hmm. And um, we would do such aggressive face and neck lifts and we'd get beautiful tightening of the tissues, but mm -hmm. people would still look kind of unnatural, sometimes even bizarre, because we'd neglect the, the volumizing of the face in favor of just tightening, which is all we had in our toolbox. Right. So now I like to incorporate uh, a minimally invasive facelift to just tighten those tissues that are loose with a short scar that maybe goes from about the sideburn area around the front of the ear to maybe just behind the earlobe. So it doesn't go all the way back here. Nothing under the chin to open up the neck. So we can address those tissues right here that we want to address along the jawline and the cheek. Um, and then the rest we can kind of do with the volume, mm -hmm. either using fat transfer or uh, fillers. The exciting part about that for me is you can, a person can have that done younger in life instead of having to feel like to justify the whole big shebang waiting another 10 years and so they can keep their youthfulness a little bit longer. Absolutely. That done and I think it's Absolutely. And, it's, and to me it's much more anatomically accurate because again we're not relying on a tightening procedure like a face and neck lift mm -hmm. to do everything. You know we're addressing the anatomy that uh, the anatomical changes that have actually happened. So we're tightening those tissues that need to be tightened, but then we're also replacing volume right. where volume has really been lost. We're not trying to drag volume from one part of the face and, and uh, use that volume to then replace areas that have just naturally become deficient. So what's the healing process? Does it differ from a full facelift, the minimally invasive facelift? Uh, I think the healing process is a little shorter for the minimally invasive facelift procedures and some of that you know may be influenced by whether we use uh, fat transfer too mm -hmm. but most people by 10 days or two weeks are are what I would say socially comfortable you know oh, they could go awesome. to a cocktail party or go to a social event and feel like they look normal they, most of the bruising and swelling is gone we don't have a lot of bruising and swelling uh, with the minimally invasive facelift. If fat transfer is incorporated one thing I should point out is that mm -hmm. fat transfer procedures do get some swelling this is normal, it's part of the, you know, part of the procedure, but again, mostly by a week, that's gone. But uh, if you are contemplating a fat transfer, be aware that you'll have uh, a little more swelling mm -hmm. than you might expect if you didn't have the fat transfer. 